Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today we're going to do another microcap tutorial. I've had some requests, so I'm going to show you how to set up microcap to do Bode plots. It's pretty easy. There's actually two ways. One really easy, one a little bit more setup. So let's just jump in and do that. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to explain what Bode plots are or the value of them in case you know, you're not familiar with them and haven't done them. Well, so what it is, it's a way to show on, uh, okay, let's say you have a speaker crossover. You have a signal coming in from your amplifier. You have a tweeter and a woofer output, okay? So at certain frequencies, you expect those signals to drop in amplitude, be attenuated by the filter, and other frequencies, they're not going to be amplified because it's a passive filter, let's say. So, but, so you should see a gain of one at certain frequencies. So let's say a woofer starts off the gain of one, then it rolls off. And that's what a bully plot is. It's a graph of that, okay? The tweeter, it's gonna be a low amplitude at low frequencies. And then as the frequency increases, it's gonna come up and then it's gonna be a gain of one. Okay, so it might not be exactly a gain of one because uh, let's say if we're doing what we call small signal versus large signal, a lot of analysis is done with small signal doesn't take into account real world things like uh, voltage drops with resistance and parasitics meaning resistance where you don't expect it to be or don't want it to be inductance or capacitance any one of those things or a combination of those things that naturally occur in practically every part even in the traces on the board the wires going to the board and so on you know you have unwanted uh, values of those things, resistance, capacitance, inductance. Those are called parasitics. They just, they're like parasites that you don't really want, but they just happen to be there. And hopefully you've taken into account, they don't really affect what you're doing. You don't really care about them. Okay. Sometimes they do. If you haven't taken them into account, when you're doing small signal analysis, you're not really pushing current. It's a idea. It's almost like the ideal situation where a large signal analysis is, uh, more real world. So, for instance, you know, an amplifier feeding a crossover. That, if you did a small signal analysis, you're going to get some ideal things. A lot of analysis is done that way, but the real world analysis would be more large signal. So you actually have an amplifier drive a signal through the uh, crossover, and you look at the input and the output. And so often, what you do is you take a generator and you uh, sweep the frequency from let's say low frequency to high frequency is generally how you do it and you plot the points you take a reading at the output and a reading the input at each one of those frequencies and then you plot those points well if you have a, uh, a scope that will give you a body plot it makes it really easy and if you don't you can just do it by hand change frequency there's other ways to do it too I'm going to show you some other ways down the road but anyway those are what body plots are. So let's jump into microcap. And I'm going to show you a couple ways to do one, okay? And we're going to use a Jean Haraga uh, Class AB amplifier. I think it's 20 watt amplifier. We're going to use that as our test bed, as our example circuit. All right? So that ought to be fun. Let's go do it. All right, guys. This is a Jean Haraga power amplifier. The original circuits are here on the right. And this came in the library. I, I made just some small changes to it. But uh, here, here, let's resize this window by hitting auto scale right here, F6. Or, or you can hit F6. Okay, so there it is. There's a schematic. Okay, here I can zoom out a little bit more if you want to see it all that way. We can use it. Zoom this way too. If that was too, too close to the schematic. I can push this up and then hit auto go that way. So now we get all the schematic in. All right. So here's the thing. We have input and output of our amplifier, right? And what we want to do is we want to run a Bode analysis. So we come up here to analysis. A lot of the times I just go to probe transient. Now we can go to probe AC as well. Let's just do that for fun. Start off that way. I'm going to grab this bar scroller here and I'm just going to look at the output. 
there we go. Simple as that. But that's the signal at the output. That's not really the gain of output versus input, right? Now, and also we need to look at the phase. And I think we could go up here to probe and here's magnitude and here's phase. So we come down here and hit the phase. Okay, there's the uh, phase and the amplitude right there. Now it's interesting, it says degrees, but I don't know if I see the, oh, are these degrees here on the side now? So now that it's using the same scale, I could have come up here and said, uh, see right now it says same Y for each one. I could turn that off and then if I come up here and hit this. Okay, now I go here to phase. And now we have our two different scales for phase and body on the same thing. So there's one way to do it. Okay, now again, this is just what's at the output, the voltage and phase. It's not giving us the gain from input to output. But I, I'm gonna show you something here. Here, let's do this another way, okay? Resize that window again. Come to analysis. This time, let's hit this AC analysis. This gives us this window where we set up a bunch of things. Our frequency range, number of points, the resolution is essentially the temperature we're running at. All these things. And uh, over here, on these two lines right here, it gives us what we're, the signals it's going to plot for. So it's going to plot these two signals right here. And right here, it says graph one, graph two. Okay. So we have decibels and volts at the resistor load and the phase of volts resistor load. That's essentially what we just did. Here, let's go ahead and run that. See now it just puts them in their own graph. Okay. So that's the AC analysis, how you can set up window that way. But that still doesn't give us the gain from input to output. That's just uh, what we've already done. But Let's go back up here and let's go limits. And this time let's add another one of these uh, measurements, okay? So I just added another one and it put it right here in the middle. I'm not sure why it's stuck in the middle, but anyway, what I'll do is, and it's also red, I'm gonna change it to blue, okay? Change that color to blue. And this time we want volts and here, whoops, I'll show you here in just a moment. I think it's uh, out. Yeah, we, we, I, I'm trying to think the labels of the output and the input. The gain is output over input, right? Output divided by input. So that's output divided by volts. Oh, and it does come up with a list of options that you can select from. And looking at list, huh, not sure, but I don't see the option I want and that's in. Oh, there we go. Maybe it's because I already hit the bracket. I'm not sure. But anyway, so now I get decibels of volts out divided by volts in. And here's a frequency range. They're all the same, except for phase. See the phase it's set for that. And that's just, you can always change this once you've plotted. But okay, now let's run it again. Okay. Oh, I think I need another bracket here. I think I need another bracket to close off this red one. Yeah. Huh. Okay, let's try that. See if that solved it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now see here's the blue and red over here on the graph. You can kind of see where they kind of change, but they're right on top of each other. So they're the same. So what was all that to do about? Well, let me explain something. If we come over here, the reason it was working out is because this was set up for one volt. So now we're dividing the output by one volt. So if you do it that way, you, you don't have to do the math. You can just set it up to look at the volts and phase at the output and you get the gain because it's the gain is output divided by input. If the input's one volt, then, you know, it's going to be the same as dividing by one, right? So 
Uh, just to show you an example of that, we'll go 0 0.5 volts. And by the way, the expression's shown right here at the bottom. Okay, now let's run that analysis here. Let's go down here at the tab and come up. There they are. Why did that not change? Oh, I've got separate scales now. Shoot. Let's go down here and say same scale so we can plug. There we go. So now they're on the same scale. So there they are. Once, here's the original one, the gain. The gain's still the same as what we saw before, but now the output, because I changed a half a volt, is putting out half the signal. And then look at this, it's flat. Way the heck out here, and then it kind of ramps up and then drops off. So, man, that's got quite the bandwidth. And look how flat the phase is. So that's pretty cool too. Now it is a 180 degree phase shift from input to output, but it's flat all the way across. So it's inverting the signal, but other than that, you know, you could hook up your speaker opposite polarity if you really wanted it to be the same polarity as the input. And if you only ran, uh, depending on what other speakers you have with different amplifiers with the same input signal you might want to do that but yeah look at that that's pretty cool and by the way you can always grab these cursors and then move the cursors around so you know if you want to plot the 3 db point or something like that like you can see you know you come over here you know so you always got these cursors you can move around okay and uh same with down here so all right Hey, I just wanted to show you that and hope that was helpful. You've got the cursor measurements down here at the bottom of the screen and I hope that helped you. And, and so if you want to copy the schematic, just ask for her, send an email to me and I'll send you a copy of the schematic. Uh, and like I said, I've only made a few changes to it. Hey guys, so what do you think of that? That makes sense? Let me know in the comments section uh, any or questions you have or comments, that kind of thing, okay? And hey, anybody else wanna jump in and help answer some of those questions? Yeah, let's do it. I think sometimes people might think they're stepping on my toes by answering a question from someone else. I don't know, because I've, I've seen some comments to that regard, but no, this is an open community. Everybody help each other, okay? But yeah, so I hope this is helpful. And hey, I wanna give two thumbs up to my patrons. Really appreciate your guys' support. And it's kind of interesting over the two or three years I've done this, I started getting some patrons. I thought that was super cool. And then, yeah, it just kind of stays, you know, some, you know, times are tough. Some people drop off, some people add on. So it's kind of has stayed the same for a while. But I really, so I really appreciate you guys that hanging in there. Because <laughs> I've got some amplifiers, I've got some more amplifiers. Uh, this is actually an older one I've tested. I really like this one. I'm going to do a video uh, on this crossover thing that I started, and we're going to take a closer look at that, okay? Let me know what else you guys want to see in that series, by the way. All right, guys, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. really helps the YouTube analytics. Uh, YouTube thinks people like it. They're going to share, and it helps the channel and all that. So it's a free way to help the channel. All right. Hey, thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.